Hey, it's Drew Bentley here with Learn Guitar with Drew. Today we're going to take a look at the caged system and why you need to know it. Um, you've probably heard of the caged system before and it sounds like this big crazy thing, but it's actually pretty logical. Um, before you take this lesson, uh, make sure you have an understanding of some bar chords. Uh, there's a series on the channel about that. And if you can understand sort of how the notes work on the fretboard as well, um, there's a series on the channel about that, about how to learn the notes on the fretboard, and some basic knowledge about your open chords. Uh, of course, you can enjoy the video uh, as well, uh, but these are sort of the prerequisites to really being able to dive into the cage system and all of its um, um, functions. But first, thanks so much for checking out the video. My name is Drew Bentley. The channel is Learn Guitar with Drew. Uh, if you like what you see here, uh, please hit that subscribe button and help support me. I really appreciate it. Uh, click the bell for notifications, and in the comment section down below, you'll find links for my websites and other guitar resources. I do teach guitar lessons as well if you're interested. Okay, so the cage system is basically uh, a way to move your open chords up the guitar neck. In a nutshell, that's what it is. Uh, there's five basic chord forms we're dealing with. The C chord. The A chord. The G chord. Chord and the D chord. Okay, so hence C A G E D spells out caged. Um, and the circle of fists, that's the right side of the circle of fists. That's like where all the sharp keys are. That's sort of the rock side of the circle of fists. That's where guitar sort of lives. The other side of the circle of fists is more of like maybe the jazz side of things where all the flats are. So you'll notice that C A G E and D are all in the sharp keys if you look at your circle of fists. Okay, so um, there are five chord forms that we can play with open chords, uh, with open strings, I should say. But then there's seven we can't. So for example, I can play a C, right? But I can't play an F sharp with open strings. Uh, in a first position, it doesn't work. So in the chromatic scale, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and back to A again, there's 12 notes. Uh, out of those 12 notes, five of those we can play with the open strings, hence the word caged. The other seven we can't. And we have to bar to move up the neck, and that's why this is so important. If you use a capo, if you're playing like the capo, and you can play up the whole guitar neck with the capo, and that's fine. But if you want to be able to move around, and let's say I was playing uh, something like Here Comes the Sun, I, want, I wanted to play lower notes, I couldn't play them because the capo would be blocking it. Um, but the capo is great for things like that song, for example, because you're staying there the whole time. So what is the cage system? So what we do, um, well, let's take a look at what it is real quick here. So we have the C chord, which is something called a piano voice chord, C, E, G, root third, fifth, okay? Then we also have something called a drop two voicing that's happening here as well. A chord is partially a drop two voicing. What that is, I'm not gonna illustrate this right now, but it's uh, taking the second to the highest note and dropping it down into the root. We end up with a chord that's sort of out of order. Root, fifth, root, third, okay? That's called a drop two voicing. In the truest form, it's a major seven chord, root, fifth, root, seven. But as a triad, root, fifth, root, third. Okay, so why does that matter? Okay, that's where our power chords come from. It's also how we uh, kind of have a distinct sound on the guitar that sounds maybe different than a piano and maybe different than other harmonic instruments, which not, there's not that many of them, but uh, guitar and piano being the two primary harmonic instruments in Western music, at least in the last century. So uh, banjo is pretty, pretty up there too. So let's take a look at this. Um, we have the C chord, which is a, a piano voiced chord. We have the A chord, which is kind of partially dropped to and partially piano voiced. The G chord is piano voice, then drop two at the bottom. The E chord is drop two at the bottom here, like the lower strings, and it's piano voice at the top. And then the D chord is pretty much uh, a drop two. So it's like a 50-50 split. Now here's where the magic happens. If I take this cage chord, C chord, as I move it up the guitar neck, the chords that I'm playing, these are all C. This is what I was doing at the intro, the little intro of, this, of the video. These are all C chords but they spell out the word caged as they move up the neck. See, that's the cool thing. Now, 
This is the first lesson in a, in a whole series of uh, videos on the cage system. The next video, we're going to get into how to run it through the circle of fifths, and then we're going to talk about how to do it different string groupings and, and some other variations and really start to work the cage system. But what is the cage system? It's five chord voicings uh, with different variations and options that move up the guitar neck, and these are all C chords. So you can see the value of that. That's pretty crazy how that works. So the very first way you would look at this is if you played chromatically. This is a C chord. And I'm using my first, second, and third fingers. If I move my fingers one, uh, one finger higher, like this, and move my hand up a fret, I would have C sharp. So that's in in a nutshell. Uh, this is a D. This is a D sharp. So you can see that looks like a C chord, but my first finger is now being what the capo would be, but it's barring, okay? So it's sort of functioning at the capo. Let's do another example. If I look at a D chord, right? Fingers one, two, three. If I use the next three fingers in line, two, three, and four, if I move that one fret higher, now I have a D sharp and or E flat, and that's a movement form. So the cage system basically takes these <clears throat> open position chords and moves them up the guitar neck, which is crazy. Now, this is how it works with the octaves. If I look at all C chords, there's my C chord. These are octaves. <clears throat> so those are both C's. If I go like this, that's a C, and that's a C. If you refer to the lessons that I have about learning the fretboard, you'll see these notes. Here's the C. Check this out. This is also a C. And this is a C. And this is a C. And a C. That's a C form. And then these are the C notes that are involved. If I go like this, that's a C chord. And an A form, you can see it looks like an A. This, if I put my first finger where my third finger is, that's now a G form, C and a G form. This guy, if I, if I look at the octaves here, this is a C and that's a C, that's an E form, you can see that. And then this guy, this is the octave here, and that's a D form. I'll do it very slowly, C, octaves, 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 octaves. Now I don't expect you to be able to do that right now, but the point is that you can see what it is. That's what this whole video is about. We're gonna work the cage system through a series of videos on how to actually utilize this and put this into your playing. So the value of this is, is it's, it's unmeasurable. So if I take a song like Brown Eye Girl, Now I can play it here. I play a G here. Here's a C. Here's a G. Here's a D. So now I'm playing Brown Eyed Girl. There's a G chord right there. Here's a C chord. It's a G chord. And here's a D chord. So as you can see, I can play Brown Eyed Girl the whole way up the guitar neck. Think of the value of that. You no longer have to just play the cowboy chords. Uh, that's fine if you want to do that, but there's a ton of reasons and a ton of applications to move your chord forms further up the neck. And this also ties into when you get into jazz, jazz chords and take things even further, the cage system is at the sort of foundation of all of that. Okay, so that's what the cage system is. It is a series of forms moving up the guitar neck, it's spelling out the word cage, which again, I think is some sort of crazy miracle that it actually exists. It's like the gods of guitar got together and whoop, that's what happened. So we have five forms, C, A, G, E, and D, up the guitar neck. And it's also important to remember that the other seven chords, like F sharp, for example, uh, C sharp and D sharp, and uh, the notes that are not caged of the seven of the twelve notes, you have to bar to play those. So that's also why it's important because if you see a song that's let's say uh, has a G sharp minor, you're going to have to play that as a, a cage system form because you can't play that in the open position. So it opens up the the a world of possibilities to you to be able to play stuff that you couldn't play if you didn't play the cage system. Okay, so that's the first video. Uh, please, uh, if you'd like to. Uh, uh, the next one will be on how to move the cage system through the circle of fifths to start learning all about how to use this up and down the guitar neck. And also refer back to the videos on, uh, on how the notes work on the guitar and also on power chords, which are probably predecessors to this one. Okay, thank you so much for checking out the video and I can't wait to see you at the next lesson.